Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, for those of you that aren't Christians, welcome also. Um, this video that I'm making tonight, um, I recorded it once and I deleted it out and restarted it because um, there's things that were shown to me that I need to be involved in this. So um, we're going to start out here. I'm going to play a song. It's a secular song by The Doors. Okay. Many of you know this song. Some of you may not because maybe you're just, you're going, wow, that's 30 years ago, 40 years ago. But I want you to listen to this because this song is dark prophecy. This song that they created speaks about right here, right now. And I don't know, I was coming in, I was going to do this video, and uh, I'm going to speak about why I was going to do this video when, when I sat down, the little small still voice said, look up this song. So I did. And then as the song was playing, I was reading the words with it. And then I realized why I was being told to look at this song. So I'm going to play it for you. I want you to listen to it. And, um... When it's done, we'll talk a little bit, and then we'll get into the main part of why I'm doing this video tonight. All right, so hold on. This is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend. The end of our elaborate plans. The end of everything that stands. Safety or surprise, the end. I'll never look into your eyes again. Can you picture what will be so? Strangers have it up. And all the children are insane All the children are insane
There's danger on the edge of town Ride the King's Highway Weird scenes inside the gold mine The killer awoke before dawn. He put his boots on. He took a face from the ancient gallery and he walked on down the hall. He went into the room where his sister lived and then he Paid a visit to his brother and then he He walked on down the hall And he came to a door And he looked inside Father, yes son, I want to kill you
Okay, why did I play this song? Why was it brought to me? Um, it has to do with what's going on right now. Now, mind you, uh, it's very common knowledge, as for those of you that know scripture, that God said that... Um, he would not do a thing without telling his prophets first. And in the same token, uh, the enemy has to do the same. And that is why we're being told, why we're constantly being told what's going to happen. Uh, for lack of a better term, I use the word dark prophecies. Um, the different, I mean, it's all planned out. They know what they're going to do. It's just a matter of timing. Uh, sometimes it's done in the subconscious level where we're not actually, we're shown, but in such a way that you don't really catch that you were shown, but you were. And this is a good example. This is a song from the early 70s from The Doors. Um, and he starts out, this is the end. Beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend, the end. Uh, he goes in, of our elaborate plans, the end. Of everything that stands, the end. No safety or surprise, the end. I'll never look into your eyes again. You know, when you go through these words, each part of the song, you know, lost in a Roman. We're back to the Roman Empire. Wilderness of pain. All the children are insane. Right now, I mean, what can you explain what's going on in the world right now? Uh, people are just going bonkers nuts. Uh, everything that is good is now evil, and everything that is evil is now good. You know? <clears throat> Ride the King's Highway, baby, with the scenes inside the gold mine. Ride the Highway West, baby. Once and again, the highway. The path to redemption and salvation is narrow. 
The road to hell is wide. It's a highway. This is what he's telling you. Look at the next line. Ride the snake, ride the snake to the lake, the ancient lake. The snake is long, seven miles. Tribulation is seven years. Ride the snake, he's old, and his skin is cold. He's speaking about Lucifer here. He's speaking about tribulation. He's speaking about taking the mark. You know, we go through these words, you know, and, and when he gets down through here, uh, the kill, 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 all of this, I'm not going to go through it. You can read it on your own and see how it all fits. Father, yes, son, I want to kill you. Who is father? That is our, that, that is Yahweh. That is our father in heaven. It hurts to set you free, but you'll never follow me. The end of laughter and soft lies. The end of nights we tried to die. This is the end. Look at this song. Read those words and look at where we're at right now. You know, the next part of this video, um, there's a certain YouTuber, uh, uh, C. Irvana that I subscribe to and I follow. Um, this woman is definitely a, a child of God's. Um, she has been gifted. She is a watchman on the wall. And uh, from the things that I've been posting in our groups, the things I've been talking about, the short videos that I've made in our groups, um, I, I've been speaking about what she's talking about now. And... Um, I was going to make a video. I actually started to make a video, and then I got this alert from uh, she had posted a video, and I went and I watched it, and I was like, you know, wow, talk about two minds thinking alike, because everything that I was going to do the video on, she had done, and the difference between her and I is I'm sandpaper and she's silk. In other words, she's got a smoother voice, her, her, her. The way of her um, showing the information is a lot smoother than me. I'm like sandpaper. I hear that all the time. You're so abrasive. Oh, you need to do this. You need to. It's me. I'm a watcher on the wall. My trumpet's quite loud. And sometimes uh, when I've been dealing with uh, the enemy's attacks all day long, I can get abrasive. And I apologize for that forefront. Um, for those of you that run into me, when you see me getting abrasive, remind me of this video. <laughs> okay. Say, hey, man. Be more like silk. All right, I get your point. Um, but I'm going to bring up her video now, and I want you to watch this and pay close attention. Um, and a perfect example is she's showing... Um, a scene from the reset 2016 uh, from the back camera and they're showing on the timer and you'll see as it zooms in a little bit you'll see 333 this is a number that many of us have been seeing absolutely everywhere I mean this is not coincidence I mean absolutely everywhere uh, a friend of mine by the name of Wendy, her and I are constantly talking how we're seeing this number. I mean, upside down, left, right, forward, backwards, everywhere you look, this number's showing up. Um, and here it is. You know, um, September 23rd of 1959 was Vatican II. And Vatican II literally changed everything when it came to Catholicism and the approach to the rest of the world. September 23rd, 2015, everybody thought it came and went, and it was just like a, a, a flat tire, and I'm telling you now, it wasn't a flat tire, it was a nuclear explosion. Um, you just didn't hear it, just didn't see it. Uh, tribulation started. 
And now we come to September 23rd, 2016, where the Pope is supposed to be uh, uh, commemorating and dedicating and uh, giving his speech uh, for this new temple of the unified uh, faiths, where Muslims, Buddhists, Christians, Catholicism, uh, every religion you can think of um, are all welcome in, into this one temple because uh, they are saying it's all one religion. We just worship the same God in a different way. Uh, the Jewish people are also involved in this. Um, you're going to see in this video something that hasn't happened. When the second temple was destroyed and Israel was destroyed, the Sanhedrin was destroyed. Well, it's been 2,000 years, and for the first time in history since the destruction of Israel, uh, the Sanhedrin is now reformed, main governing body in Israel, and they have done something that hasn't happened since the destruction of the Second Temple, and that is they have elected their high priest. Now, it's not a high priest that's going to govern over the Hebrew faith. The high priest... His job is to administer the temple. He is the high priest over the temple. Well, how can they build a temple? How can they have a high priest if there's no temple? Well, it's because they're not electing a high priest to um, hopefully that maybe one day they might get a third temple. No, they, they already know. Now, whether it's going to be uh, what the Temple Institute wants to do or whether it's something else. Uh, we're going to find out. So far, everything that everybody thought uh, and how they all had it mapped out is not mapped out and is not so obvious. Uh, most people aren't even seeing what's going on. They're still thinking we're early in the birth pangs and we're trying to tell you, man, those have been long since over, you know. Um, and now we got What's coming up this month? People, wake up. If you don't see what we've been trying to tell you for a year now, maybe this will wake you up. And if it doesn't, you need to start thinking about possibly revamping and redoing your, your faith system as to where you think we really are before you get caught up in deceit. If you're in the deception now, it may be very hard for you to get out. I mean, I hate to say it. Um, there are those of us that are sounding the trumpet, and you're hearing it, and you're looking at us, and you're going, oh, fools. You're just, you're conspiracy theorists. You're trying to get uh, uh, subscribers. You're trying to get views. You're trying this. You're trying that. We're trying to tell you the truth. It's that plain and simple. Now I'm going to bring up her video and let her, as I mirrored it, I asked for permission and mirrored it in um, into this one so that you can listen from her, from, from her way she talks and explains it, which is a little easier than me. And you're going to see. And then when it's done, we'll talk a little bit more. So uh, hold up a second. Something is not right. What in the world is Pope Francis and his ecumenical movement up to now? They are behind this house of prayer in an interface service that will occur in the old city of Jerusalem from September 4th through the 23rd. But there are more details coming out now. A new development has happened. A Kohen Gadol, or high priest, has been appointed by the Sanhedrin in Israel. According to an article published on August 29, 2016, he could begin his first service in one week. This means that the high priest could enact his duties starting on September 4th through the 5th. Is it merely a coincidence, then, that the Sanhedrin has appointed the highest of the Levitical priesthood in two millennia to begin services on the exact day 
that this interfaith meeting will also begin. One must contemplate the importance of this appointment. The High Priest has an ancient history that comes from the lineage of Aaron, through Zadok in the First Temple of Solomon, through the exile and the return, into the Hasmonean dynasty, and finally through the highly tumultuous Herodian dynasty. Now, nearly 2,000 years later, a new High Priest has been established. This new Kohen Gadol has already begun his Omer offerings in the old city of Jerusalem, in the Jewish quarter. When they interviewed him about his appointment, he indicated that there is, quote, a need to be prepared to prepare the priest to have everything ready, unquote, once the Israeli government decides to permit the sacrificial system to begin. There would only be a few weeks to make preparations for it. They could even be ready in time for Yom Kippur this year. And the structures required, including the horned altar, the two pillars of Boaz and Yashin, and the menorah could be set up overnight. This is because the Temple Institute has already built the parts of the temple necessary to perform a ritual sacrifice. The Kohen Gadol is only one of many new developments, indicating that the third temple will be rebuilt very soon. Remember this past March, the Sanhedrin performed a ceremony appointing two men as witnesses to the new calendar. This was the first time that this event occurred in 2000 years. The Sanhedrin and the religious authority are moving quickly on other aspects of the temple. Could it be that some agreement has been met and perhaps a third temple will be announced in September? There are rumors now that the meeting of the three monotheistic faiths in the old city is meant to show solidarity, that an agreement has been struck regarding the temple. Who is behind this? It might be Francis, who will allegedly perform a secret mass in Jerusalem between September 4th through the 23rd. This isn't confirmed, but some sources are reporting that Francis intends to hold the Mass on the Temple Mount. Breaking Israel news, a uh, high priest has been chosen by the Sanhedrin Temple Service, could be one week uh, away. The article states here, a significant step was recently taken towards reinstating the Temple Service when the, the nascent Sanhedrin selected Rabbi Baruch uh, Kahane as the next Kohen Gadol. Kohen Gadol, which does mean the High Priest. Okay, the selection was made as a precaution for Yom Kippur if the political conditions should change, allowing the Jews to assess to the Temple Mount. They will be required by Torah law to bring the sacrifices. Rabbi Kahane is confident that if, if that should happen, temple service could begin in less than one week. Another article that they had that was on their website here is also about the third temple itself. It may not, as they state in the article, may not look like what we en envision. Uh, yes, right here. What if the third temple didn't look like we expect? Okay. Uh, let's just blow that up for you and bring it over. What if the temple doesn't look like what we expect? We already know what's going on in Jerusalem this coming month here in September. This inter-dialogue thing, bringing all the peoples together, um, all the religions together. And this is where the, the Orthodox community is trying to push for the building of the third temple. As they've stated here, they want to again sacrifice animals. What Israel has got to recognize is that Mashiach has already come. All right, so we're here on the precipice of all this happening. And at the same time, it's believed that the Pope of Rome is gonna be there this month. I think if he goes, it's gonna be kept secret from the rest of the people because there has been said that there would be a secret mass done on the Temple Mount with him present. That's been some very uh, controversial things. I, I, I don't even know if I even brought that out to you guys as of yet. Some information was shared with me a little while back. I could not 
corroborate the information, so I've not said very much about it, but they're talking about a secret mass, the Pope being involved, and just a lot of things, guys, that are very concerning. Anyways, I want to get this right out to you. Uh, things are starting to ramp up very fast. It's interesting that they elect a high priest now. It's interesting that they're bringing all these world leaders together to come to Israel there, all of them uh, trying to put together all the religions of the world. The interfaith movement in Jerusalem is occurring alongside the final push toward a new world religion. A top priority for Francis was to push an ecumenical gathering of all denominations and religions across the entire world from east to west. Francis has outreached to almost every religion in the world with accelerating speed and urgency. In the U.S., Francis was the driving force behind Together 2016 event. Pope Francis accomplished his agenda through a vassal named Nick Hall. We've also seen other ecumenical events like this one, called The Gathering, that will begin on September 21st, 2016. This will occur at the same time that the Arch of Triumph is constructed in New York City on September 19th and will be left standing for three days. And here's another event called Word Explosion. These conventions are bringing together thousands of people and they are preaching a message of unity, peace, and ecumenism. This is the opposite of what Jesus taught us. He said that he did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Not peace, but division. He said that those who followed him would be hated by all nations, not loved and respected. What we are seeing is an inversion of the truth right in front of our eyes, and many are buying into it. Perhaps the truth, these ecumenical events, is hidden in plain sight. The gathering displays a Masonic compass, a pyramid with the all-saying eye on top, and the megachurch pastors are forming the inversion or bottom of the compass. In a trailer for the gathering, one can see that it depicts fires spreading across the U.S. and large cracks forming as though the land was just struck by a nationwide earthquake. What is this trailer telling us about the nature of this event? The Kingdom Come ecumenical event that just happened in August featured an entire trailer of inversion, including showing the cross inverted, which is extremely demonic. Everything in the world right now is being turned upside down. The things forbidden in the scriptures are now being openly celebrated. While those who hold true to the teachings of Yeshua found in the Gospels, those who obey what he said are becoming more and more ostracized from society, more mocked and more made fun of. There is no doubt that the world elites already knew what was coming. We can see it right here on the Economist 2016 cover. 
It depicts Pope Francis standing next to Kyril, one of the biggest ecumenical stories of the year. The two leaders haven't met since the 1054 schism. The separation between the Vatican and Russian Orthodoxy is perhaps one of the greatest religious divides in world history. But in 2016, something is changing. Boundaries are dissolving, divisions are going away, and differences in dogma are no longer apparent. Francis is readying all religions for the coming of the capstone. We must reject his message and his agenda. It isn't what Yeshua taught. Numerous biblical scholars and men of God from the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries warned us that the Vatican was the system of the Antichrist and that they would be instrumental in ushering in the last days. Adam Clark, Joseph Burke, and Robert Clayton made predictions about it centuries ago. Their commentaries on the end seem to be influenced by the mysterious predictions of Isaac Newton. 2016 was the year to watch. The Vatican would be highly active in this year. Events of the end are accelerating like never before. We are seeing the birth of the one world religion and the establishment of the Antichrist system on earth. We should be watching closely now and praying always that we are worthy to escape all things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Did you get all that? This is not a joke. And this is not trying to get views. This is not about trying to get subscribers. It's trying to get you to open your eyes to see what's really happening, where we are in the timeline. I mean, they've elected the high priest. The temple's going up. <laughs> People. This is revelation coming to life before your eyes. And many of you are still thinking that, nah, this, this isn't it. This isn't it. Can't be. Um, for those of you that are old enough, I want you to think. Over the past 30 years, how has the movie industry changed? How has television changed? I mean, what? In the early 70s, we were watching the Waltons. And now the main show is Lucifer. Uh, uh, Pretty Little Liars. Um, The Walking Dead. Look at the music industry. You know, back 30, 40 years ago, um, it was the hard rock and the metal scene that was like, oh yeah, they're singing about Satan and they were, uh, you know, uh, kind of pushing it to sell albums. Uh, for those of you that are that young, that was this thing that was made of vinyl out of kind of plastic had grooves in it and we used to put it on this table and it would spin you put this thing down had a needle and it would read it you know <laughs> yeah I'm an old fart I'm, I'm what 51 going on 52 um everything is literally changed you know uh and we have this quantum effect going on and literally, reality is being changed around us. This book, and it's a book. This is not the Word of God. This is the Holy Scriptures. Uh, this is the words 
that the prophets wrote that were inspired by God. It's God breathed, but it's not the word of God. There is only one the word of God. And the word of God is seated at the right hand of the Father very shortly to come back. Um, we can go to John 1 1 and I can tell you, you know, uh, I'll read it right now. Let me just get up there first, real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm already past it. Sorry. Um, Luke 19:27. Yeah, bring them before me and slay them. Yeah, okay. Like Christ, ever, you show me another place in the Bible where Christ said to go to bring people before them and kill them. Uh, uh, the Spanish version, the Capitolis, bring them before me and behead them. Um, no, you know. Uh, but John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is not a book. The Word is not ink and paper and, and animal skin. Okay? Um, this is... God breathed scripture it is the words of the prophets that God said, write this down. So they did. God said, tell it to the people. So they did. But it is not the word of God. You know, let's go down, go down to 14. Uh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory <coughs> The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is not flesh. This is not the glory of God. This is a book, okay? How many times i got to stress that? So this quantum effect that's happening, where these words are literally changing. I don't care how old your Bible is, it's happening, okay? This is part of tribulation. There are scripture in here, scriptures in here that speak exactly to that point of the changes in reality and the changes of the word. No, I'm not going to go through all that on this video. I have plenty of videos on that. If you're watching this on Facebook, don't just click the picture or watch it in Facebook. Shut that out. Click on the description. Go to YouTube. It'll take you to my channel. Click on my name. You have that video. You'll see my name. Click on my name. It'll take you to my channel. And then there are all the videos. I'm telling you, what is happening now in September is verification for anybody that has doubted this. We are in tribulation, people. It started last year. Why didn't we see all these major effects going on? Because... Satan's wrath has been held back by God's jubilee. So he's been using this year to set everything up. Tribulation is not coming in with World War III. It's not coming in with Christ coming on the clouds and taking everybody away. It's coming in with peace. It's coming with prosperity. It's coming in with all the reasons why everything looks all fine and dandy. But your minds are being programmed and, and, and the world is being manipulated and changed in such a way that you're going to take this mark. You're going to follow that beast. That's what it's all about. We're trying to wake you up so that you won't do that. Now, if you want to skip through the other parts of this video, you want to skip this ending, by all means, go ahead. But you watch what I mirrored into this because that is so important that is the crux of what this whole video is about and I'm going to ask you of all the videos I've done a sobering truth a sobering reality whether you watch the four part series or the whole thing in one, one chunk and this one of all the videos I've done share this video I mean share it Every one of y'all, you watch it, just hit that arrow, arrow share, click we want to share it to. It's that easy. And then that many more people get to see it. Don't be afraid of what people might think of you that's on your friends list because of what you're sharing. Because what did Christ say? 
those of you that are ashamed of me before man, I will be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. You get that. I make these videos. I stand up, not because I'm, I'm a peon. I'm a worthless peon that did a whole lot of bad stuff in my life. I am like the last one on the planet that deserves to be saved. But, but, but God found it in his heart to forgive me. And I'm going to tell you what. Anyone that's able to look at my past and say, dude, I love you. It's all cool. Don't worry about it. I don't even see it. Oh, I am professing him to the ends of the earth. End of story. Man, never mind. When that, when that brain comes down there chopping my head off, I'm going to be professing Christ to the very last moment when it, when it hits there. And when my head hits the bucket, my lips are still going to be moving, professing Christ in the last seconds of, of before the brain dies. You know what I mean? Literally, I'm serious. Are you serious? Are you serious? I don't have a coffee cup here that says, are you serious? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I love that guy. I mean, whether or not you agree with his, 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 uh, his faith. Uh, I've heard all kinds of contradictions. I've heard, you know, then again, you don't know what's real because the enemy's attacking us on all kinds of fronts. But um, he's always got real good, reliable information. And I love that term. Hey, are you serious? All right. All right, I'm going to end this. I'm going to ask you that you bow your head with me. And that we, we pray to the Lord. And we ask him that those whose eyes are still shut, that the scales are still on, that the scales will fall away. Father, we come to you in prayer that we ask you that you will remove the scales from the eyes of the people that, that are still not seeing this. Um, that you at least give them an open mind to look at the information, to study it and realize where we are in the timeline. Time is so, so, so very short, and we're getting to the point where maybe it's going to get too late for them. And many will come knocking on the door, and you will say, I don't know you. And they'll say, we professed in your name. You know, we cast demons out in your name. We did this in your name. We did that in your name. And you're going to say, be gone for workers of iniquity, for I do not know you. We pray for those people. That you will lift those blinders out from one of their from their eyes and that you will pull the cotton out of their ears and that they'll start to understand what's going on. Judgment starts in the house of the Lord and we know that. For those that are lost that aren't with you, we pray that you will bring them before you, that you will open their eyes enough to where they will consider you and, and the reality for which you are that they will be given the choice to say yes or no. And Father, for those of us that are awake, I ask that you strengthen us and that you, you give us the ability to endure to the end, that you strengthen us and you carry us and that you are our shield. I ask all of this in Jesus' beautiful name, Amen. <clears throat> For those of you that are making videos that are talking about all this, I I I, I see it on Facebook all the time. You know, um, you're pushing pushing an agenda. Like uh, I see the flat Earth people. I'm not saying you're wrong. Uh, wrong. Mark my honestly. I'm not saying you're wrong. I may not see it the way you do right now. Maybe you are right. But here's the issue that I have. Virtually every one of my videos that you see, I am professing Christ. No matter what my position is on any subject, 
somewhere in there I'm professing Christ and trying to bring the lost to God because it doesn't matter what your your, your conception is on round earth, flat earth, uh, dome, uh, universe, whatever, all kinds of different things. None of that matters if you do not profess Christ. If you believe that Christ is the word that came and became flesh and lived, dwelt among us, and that he was crucified, died, buried, and on the third day rose, that our sins were to be carried off from us, separated from us, as his sacrifice for us. If you believe that, you need to start professing that, because that is first and foremost before anything else. It truly is. All right, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to go on that rant, but um, yeah, I did. But it's uh, 4.30 in the morning. I want to finish this up so I can get it posted up to um I kind of cheated in the beginning. I was going to do this thing where uh, each verse from the song would fade in and do a little bit. But it was like, I wanted to get this information out so bad, I cut all that out and said, let's just put it straight out for everyone to read, you know, and then we'll get into the rest of this. So if you're still up and you see this, share this video share this video share this video if you wake up and it's now the sun's up and you're now seeing this video um share this video share this video and one more time if i haven't said it share this video this information needs to get out and not telling anybody when you've seen the information for your very eyes you know it to be true and that you don't share it with the rest of the world think about that not good i love you all i really do i pray about each and every one of you um for those of us that are in our groups um You know how I feel. And I pray for each and every one of you. Tomorrow Sunday. Um, I hope you have a good, wonderful day. Tomorrow is my family day with my dad. Um, he doesn't have a whole lot of time left. He's very old. And uh, every week that I see him, he's looking a little worse. Um, my nephew believes and he said he's been shown that um when everything goes bad uh that dad won't be around which by what andrew's seen um dad has very little time left before he's called home and then he's in paradise and I'm going wow it's taking him so long <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, I'm ranting. I'm a little tired. Now we're at 4.33. Oh, 33. I just looked. I, oh, that number is coming up everywhere. All right. Good night, my friends. See you online. And if you're not part of our groups, uh, definitely join up uh, on Facebook. Uh, the one is The Quantum Effect concerning the, the scriptures. And the other one is Quantum Effect concerning the scriptures. Uh, praise channel, excuse me. Quantum Effect concerning the scriptures, praise channel. Um, that's nothing but praise and worship. People putting their, out their testimonies, putting out sermons, uh, Uploading sermons from other ministers, uh, posting videos from different Christian uh, uh, artists, uh, just uplifting the body. So look us up, come join us. Um, we do have a website, Quantum Effect Concerning the Scriptures .com. Um, You can come check us out there. Uh, we are in the process of, of uh, moving our domain name to a new site, to a new website. Um, 
that is basically uh, a vastly improved version of what we have right now. Uh, it's about up in about another week, so keep checking on it. All right, peace. I love you all. Share this video. Good night.